In this video, we are going to be looking at the Accelerated 7 in uh, Illustrative Math, and I'm in the Students section, so that way students can see um, their side. And we're looking at Unit 1, Rigid Transformations and Congruence. And we're going to take a look at the three main transformations that they will use during this unit. So I have the first one up, rigid transformations. The word rigid just means that we're not changing anything about the angles or the lengths of the sides. So we're going to move this shape. We're going to translate. Back in elementary school, they learned it as a slide. And we're not going to change anything about it. We're going to keep everything the same, lengths of sides, angles. One strategy that we show them in class is to use um, tracing paper. We can show the students that they can trace this. So I have, we'll have them take a pencil and just do a little rough trace of the shape, trying their best to keep it uh, as close as possible to the original. This is nice because they keep the original on their paper. Then with their tracing paper, they can slide this and get it into location. Okay, so if I know I want to take my this triangle and I want to translate this triangle so that point A is 10 units to the right, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark those locations. So I have to go 10 units to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to put like a little marker there. So that's my 10 units to the right. And then I'm going to move three down. One, two, three. This is where A is going to be translated. Okay. That is the location. So I can take my tracer and I can see that this is where it will go. If I want to replicate this on my paper, well, I know this is five centimeters. So if I have a ruler handy, I could come over here and do five centimeters. That would take me to here. Okay, so remember nothing is changing about my triangle. So if this is A, this is going to be B. And I can see that this is 3.5 centimeters. So I'm going to come over here and do 3.5. Okay. Now all I have to do is connect my A and my C, my hypotenuse. And I've just translated it. Now, how do we code that this is a copy? We use these little dashes, these little apostrophes. And this lets us know that this is the copy of the original shape. So when we're translating, all we're doing is moving. And we use the term a, a move along a vector. So what that means, the vector is just that arrow, that location we're taking from A to this point and then from this point down. So when we are doing translations, we do want to be careful. We're not doing diagonal moves. We're following a grid. So it's going to be either to the right or to the left, up or down. That is translations. Up next, we have rigid transformations, reflections. So we have vertical reflections. We have horizontal reflections. So I'm going to show you two different types of reflections that we can do. So my first one, I'm going to say we're going to do a vertical reflection. And we're going to use point C as our like vertical line. So I am going to make a vertical reflection over this line. And I'm using point C as my point where I'm going to reflect it over. OK, so I'm going to grab that tracing paper. Now, for this one, if I reflect it over this line, I'm literally just going to flip the paper and see that everything is just going to be reflected backwards. See that? This is why the tracing paper is really good to use. It's a good visual, especially for students who just need to see it and move it with their hands. So now I see, OK, this is what the reflection is going to look like. So let's see if we can draw it. Now that we have that visual, we can see it. Just like we did with the translations, I can see that this line segment is 3.5 centimeters. So I'm going to reflect it 3.5 centimeters in the opposite direction. OK. So this line is now reflected. Let's get that parchment paper back up here. And you can see that B is now over here, right? C is not really moving. It's staying in the, in the same spot. It, it's backwards on my parchment paper. 
my C copy is going to be in the same location as my original C, and my B is here. Okay? And this line segment matches this line segment, 3.5 centimeters. Okay, now I'm going to replicate my AB again using the parchment paper I can see. So this is 5 centimeters, so I can use my ruler and I can make a 5 centimeter line. Mark my dot. Connect. Okay, so now I have my A copy. This is the easy part. <laughs> make the hypotenuse. This would be a re vertical reflection, copy A, B, oh, and C. Now I'm going to do a horizontal reflection. And for my horizontal reflection, I'm going to use line segment B, C. So I, I did my vertical reflection over point C, my horizontal reflection. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use B, C as my reflection line. So again, pulling up my tracing paper, I can see that if I take this triangle, and I want to reflect it down, I'm flipping it, and BC is going to line right up with BC, and my A is on the total opposite side there, okay? So again, now that I can see it with my tracing paper, the only thing I really need to draw is that line segment AB. Okay, so we know that this is five centimeters. I can line it up and draw a five centimeter line. Okay, so there's B, and this is also a copy of B. This is a copy of A, and I'm gonna draw the line. And then I can just connect here. Notice C is also not changing, C copy. This is my reflection horizontally. It's, I'm flipping it down, okay? And this five centimeter line is my five centimeter line here, and my hypotenuse is now here. These are reflections. Last but not least, we have rigid transformations, rotations. Now, I find that rotations are the most challenging for students. Um, rotations have to do with circles. So I have a nice little circle here just to kind of help um, with un the understanding of what's happening with a rotation. Think of it like a clock. And I know we don't use analog clocks that much anymore, um, but if you think about the hands on a clock kind of rotating, and if we are starting at 12 o'clock, that would be like zero degrees. And then we move over to three o'clock and that would be our 90 degree turn. And if we move down to the bottom here to the six, that would be a 180 degree turn or half a circle. And then if we rotate it one more time over here to the nine, that would be 270 degrees. So we're basically just thinking of our rotations or our turns as a clock, and we're working either clockwise or we're going counterclockwise. So if we're moving in this direction, we're doing clockwise, and if we're going in the backward direction, we're doing our counterclockwise moves. And we can rotate shapes around that circle. Okay, and for this for this unit in this grade, we mostly use the benchmarks 90, 180, 270, and then a full circle all the way back around would be the 360. So that's what we're thinking of when we're doing rotations. So I find the tracing paper exceptionally um, useful for rotations. Students can sometimes struggle with seeing a rotation. So if I want to rotate my triangle ABC, so the directions may say rotate 90 degrees triangle ABC, 90 degrees. And I'm going to stick with clockwise for this example. There's always a center of rotation. So we're going to say we're going to rotate 90 degrees around point C. Think of it as like the anchor, or if you are, if you have like a um, a wheel, a tire. This is the center, and I'm going to rotate this around, and I'm going to use that. I might even use a pencil, kind of to hold it into place, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, which is just going to be one paper turn. So if I have my tracing paper, I'm just turning it one spin, going from horizontal to vertical. Okay. So this is what a 90 degree turn would look like. And this one is really hard for students to visualize without the paper. Okay, so I can see 
that my C is not moving and my B is right here. So I'm going to remove my tracing paper and I know now that my B is going to go 3.5 centimeters up from C. So I'm just going to find that 3.5 and I'm going to mark my point. Okay, right there. So now this is my B copy. And I'm just going to draw the line and I can see that now this B has rotated 90 degrees 90 degrees around point C and then I can even show students you can even show students like um, when they have a, like they have a protractor that this B to the new B is a 90 degree angle see that so we've just turned our shape 90 degrees now I have to replicate my line segment AB now where is that going to go is that going to go up top or is it going to go at the bottom and again the tracing paper comes in handy because now I can go back and rotate it again one more time. All right, so I have my, oh look, see my, my B and my, my AB is at the top, not at the bottom. My hypotenuse is gonna be here at the bottom. Now replicate their copy of line AB. And then the hypotenuse is done here, okay? So my C copy. And I can label my sides. I can label my lengths because nothing is changing. Remember, it's rigid, so they can come over here and just relabel their copies. Now, that was a 90 degree clockwise turn. And again, the tracing paper is excellent because they can even just kind of explore and say, okay, well, if I turn it one turn, that's a 90 degree. If I turn it again around one more time, they can see the other 90 degree full circle comes back around and we have back where we started 360 degrees so again highly recommend the tracing paper as a practice for this and using it to help them with the drawing these are rotations now i'm going to take a look at the accelerated grade seven um, lesson uh, lesson six and in this in this lesson the students have an opportunity to do a translation, a reflection, and a rotation using our digital tools, which is nice. So they have the option of the graph paper and tracing paper, but they can also use the digital tools. So this asks them to relocate or translate A so that P is moved to the copy. So for this tool, I'm just going to move my shape. So I'm gonna select this button that says translate object, and I'm gonna click the object, and I wanna go from P to P copy and then I have translate laid at my shape. So this is another way using these digital tools that the students can practice with our rigid transformations. Now I scroll down here and I have a slightly different grid which is is fine. Um, this, the directions say to rotate B and triangle B 90 degrees clockwise using R as the center of rotation. Okay so I'm going to use my rotate tool so I'm going to rotate B, and I'm going to use this as my rotating point and I want to go 90 degrees clockwise so I want to 90 degrees and I want to make sure that says clockwise hit OK and there's my rotation and then I can label my my angles I can label the um, the letters the different sides of my shape okay last we have an example of a reflection using this tool and it asks us to reflect pentagon C using the line L. So this is an imaginary line, kind of like we drew on our graph paper. And I'm gonna use for this one, this reflect about a line. So I can click that button, click C, and the line, I'm re I wanna reflect along this line. There you have it. So students can use these tools. Again, this one, this example, I was using lesson six, um, no bending or stretching.